Hi everyone, Knoopsy here. The iPad Pro Magic Keyboard from Apple is the accessory we've always wanted. A laptop grade keyboard, backlighting, an adjustable viewing angle, and a glorious trackpad. So when the Magic Keyboard was finally released, I ordered it the moment it dropped for the 11 inch version. I've been using it for about a week now, I have some thoughts, and this is my review. Today's video is brought to you by Paperlike, an accessory for iPads that makes writing and drawing with your Apple Pencil feel like paper. Hit the link in the description to learn more. Okay, so I've used the iPad Pro pretty much as my main computer since 2018 with the Apple Smart Keyboard, and with the Magic Keyboard, it feels like an entirely different experience. Now, when the early reviews dropped, people said this keyboard felt super heavy, and honestly, it does have a bit of weight, but doesn't really weigh as much as the iPad itself, and won't feel ridiculously heavy in a bag. Now, to be fair, I do have the 11-inch version, but the 12.9-inch version is definitely going to add an extra chunk of weight. So, very similar to the Smart Keyboard, it connects to your iPad with the Smart Connector and some very strong magnets at the back much stronger than the smart keyboard for sure. This thing is not going anywhere. And of course, this case works with both the 2020 and 2018 iPad Pro as well. The smart connector means no charging the keyboard required. The iPad supplies all the power to the keyboard to keep it going. And from my in-depth testing, the keyboard doesn't really affect the iPad's battery life at all. It's pretty much consistently the exact same as before. And speaking of iPad battery life, the Magic Keyboard has a USB-C port on the side hinge. You can plug your USB-C cable in, and it works as a pass-through charging port for the iPad. From 0 to 100%, it took around 3 hours to fully charge with the Apple cable and charging cube. And that's pretty close to simply just plugging your iPad in normally with the USB-C port, so that's pretty good. However, there are some points to know. First, this port is only for charging. No accessories, they're not going to work. Just charging. But that means while you are charging with this port, it actually frees up your main USB-C port on the iPad for accessories, storage, and adapters. Also, you pretty much have to stick to Apple's USB-C cable and adapter. Battery packs and chargers from other companies, especially USB-A to USB-C cables, don't tend to consistently work and say, not charging, even though they do provide enough power. Okay, so the design of this thing is definitely one of the biggest features, and it's very unique. You set it down on the table, and you can pretty much open it up with one hand. You raise the screen, then it kind of clicks into place, you tilt the screen up, then the display turns on, you can log in with Face ID instantly. The iPad just kind of floats above the keyboard in a similar design to various iMacs and the Pro Display XDR. To be fair, it does kind of look magical and almost impossible based on how thin the case appears. And it is perfectly weighted. Even tapping the screen or pushing it, it provides enough resistance so it doesn't actually wobble or flex. The hinge allows for some decent adjustments, but not infinite adjustment as you might expect from the product photos. There's the initial angle that it locks into, then you can tilt back about this much. And that's it. It doesn't go back any further. Now it would have been super cool to have this infinitely adjustable angle on this keyboard case, but honestly, the angle here is basically perfect. It would have been nice to go back a little bit further, but for most of my use cases, whether it's on my lap, on a desk, or I'm just watching videos, it's pretty much fine. Okay, so the typing experience. In short, I'm in love. I was admittedly a huge fan of the smart keyboard, but this is so much more satisfying. While there isn't this crazy amount of key travel, there's still quite a bit for such a slim keyboard and it feels incredibly precise. It's satisfying and very enjoyable to type on. It feels like a sharper, cleaner, more accurate typing experience. It's amazing. Now the spacing and size of some of the keys in the 11 inch version can be a little bit to get used to as it's very densely packed. But after about an hour of actually using this keyboard, I was pretty much fluent with typing. The keyboard is also backlit, and that backlighting isn't really adjustable beyond a slider and settings, but letting the auto backlighting just do its thing hasn't disappointed me yet. And the trackpad. Apple is basically the king of trackpads, and here, it's no different. This thing is amazing. The whole surface area of the trackpad is fully clickable, and unlike the MacBook trackpad, this one actually does depress when you click on it. It's very precise, the click is satisfying, and you can also switch to tap to click in settings, and for right click you just use two fingers. 
The trackpad also supports all the iOS gestures and iPad navigation features that you're used to. It feels very natural doing the three finger close, two finger scroll, or pinch to zoom. There's also the new specially designed iPad cursor, which actually adapts to UI elements as you hover over them. This trackpad and the soft integration on the iPad just feels human, it feels natural. More natural than any other mouse or trackpad I've ever used. It's very responsive and smooth and immediately makes the desktop's traditional cursor feel archaic and dated. You gotta try it for yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna be real with you here. I think this keyboard for the iPad is excellent. It's really a game changer for the iPad experience. But that being said, it's not a perfect piece of technology. I think the keys and trackpad are perfect, I have really no complaints there, but the rest of this case does have some weaknesses. First, if you use your iPad a lot for note taking or drawing, you have to take the iPad completely off of the case to actually use it flat on a table. Unlike the smart keyboard, you can't fold this keyboard onto itself. Thankfully the iPad easily pops off and back on so it's not that much of a hassle, but it just means you have to either put away the whole keyboard or work on top of it. It's just a little bit annoying. You can also flip the whole thing upside down to have this sloped drawing or writing mode, I guess, as well. While the smart keyboard is pretty much sealed, if you get any liquid or dust beneath the keys on the Magic Keyboard, it's basically over. This is also the exact same material used on the smart keyboard, meaning it has basically the worst imaginable long-term durability. Within a week of at home and very careful usage, my smart keyboard had plenty of wear all along the bottom and the edges. And already the Magic Keyboard has some scuffs and scratches and wear in some different places too. For this expensive of a keyboard and for it to already look worn down and roughly treated within a week even though it was treated with the absolute utmost care, it hurts me inside. And yes, the price is a lot. In the US, this keyboard costs $300 for the 11 inch version, or $400 Canadian plus tax. For the 12.9 inch version, it's $350 US, or $450 Canadian plus tax. For reference, the iPhone SE, an entire full featured phone, costs $400. Okay, to conclude, who is the Magic Keyboard for and who should buy it? If you use your iPad Pro as your main computer, you type a lot, do work that requires precision, you don't draw or handwrite too much, and you can't stand the smart keyboard, then get the Magic Keyboard. But if you're a more casual and price conscious iPad user who values flexibility and portability and don't need to have a trackpad for your day to day work, then go with the smart keyboard. The Magic Keyboard doesn't really kill the smart keyboard. These are two different keyboard cases for two different people. But I gotta say, I'm really feeling the magic with the Magic Keyboard, despite some of its flaws and the high price. But you know what else is magical? Paperlike, our sponsor making these iPad Pro videos possible. Paperlike is a special screen protector for your iPad that gives a more natural feeling when you're writing or drawing with your Apple Pencil. Drawing on glass can be slippery. Drawing on paper-like feels much better with a slight added grip and texture. It's a perfect match for your Apple Pencil, and also hides fingerprints on your display. It's available for all iPads at the link in the description, and includes free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Give it a try. So what do you think of the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard? Is it too expensive? Is it worth the price? Do you plan to buy one? Did you buy one? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe, and thank you for watching.